bright duty every student matters to the safeguards for liberty as we all know liberty is freedom right now safe and guard that means how to keep freedom safe and what are the things which can guard its security so let's read about that democratic government we all are aware for the people by the people and from the people that means it is the form of government which is the modern form of government and most of the countries are following democracy and it guards liberty as well because here you could see people 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 that means uh, the government which is chosen by the people for the people from the people so what does it mean it means that democratic government is giving a safeguarding then provision of fundamental rights as soon as we are born in a country we all are privileged with fundamental rights that means no one can uh, snatch all those rights from us because it is given by the constitution of india and we all can enjoy those fundamental rights what are those fundamental rights that we will discuss later on then independent judiciary if you are being exploited if you are being harassed you straight away can take help from the judiciary system of the country separation of powers that is your country is federal powers are being divided and these powers are divided to minimize the burdens and for better results of administration then rule of law that means all are equal in eyes of law decentralization of power that mean from upper level to lower one right when the powers are divided from upper to lower free press and healthy public opinion that means people can express and they can have their public opinion as well and this is very important because this is a kind of you can say challenge for the government to improve its mistakes or to improve its policies for the welfare of the citizens then strong party system it gives you choices it gives a healthy competition as well and people do change their uh, strategies to prove them the best and economic security that means the opportunities for employment and education makes you economically secured now let's do one by one the democratic form of government democracy is a form of government in which the ruler is elected by the people i have clearly told you by for and from that means we choose the representatives they are chosen for us and they people are among us only those who participate to contest the election if china had a democratic government they could have avoided the famine but there is only single party system which is equal to domination and you know a non democratic government can respond to the needs of the people but it all depends on the wishes of the people who rule that means a non democratic country or the rule is a rule by dictators or monarchs there is no choice of people because here the rulers are the one those who simply uh, modify all the decisions and they just force the people to follow that but a democratic government is a better government because it's more accountable form of government and they are more uh, answerable to the people and they just work for the welfare of the people also and safeguards afforded by written constitution too and thank god we have a constitution in our country that everything is written there constitution you all know 
like constitution is the set of rules and those set of rules are for everyone we just have to follow it and above all the judiciary system is also mentioned there and judiciary plays an important role because it is the guardian of indian political system as well as the constitution some constitutions not only lay down the rights but also provide the means to enforce them and citizens of india have the right to move the supreme court or the high court for the enforcement of the rights conferred by the constitution our most precious rights are equality before law right to life and personal liberty right against exploitation the decentralization of power that means how the powers are been divided how the functions and the powers are been segregated so that the functions and resources of the state from the center to the elected representatives at the lower level so as to facilitate greater direct participation of citizens in governance that means if it is central government they are uh, having uh, the national issues with them to uh, make satisfied people and they have to solve all these problems then if we talk about state they are particularly uh, state level issues uh, are solved by them and the local people local government this is the local level this is the most important level because you know the problems which are of a common person that could be more properly uh, solved by the local government because they live much more near to them nobody knows them from the central nobody knows from the state but the local people they know better uh, problems than any other form of government and this is known as separation of powers the powers are further to go divided between the central government and the state government such an arrangement is found in the federal government rule of law and impartial rule of law imposed and held in imbibing a sense of restraint on administration there are cannot be self confinement of power as even an ordinary law is supreme all laws public or private are being administered by same set of independent and impartial judiciary this ensures adequate check on the other two organs like if you all have done this in your class 10 as well like this is legislative this is executive and this is judiciary and you know what happens in that this judiciary keeps an eye on e both of them and these two organs also discuss everything with them so all of them just do checks and balances so this process is also known as checks and balances because these three keep an eye on each other to do further work then autonomy of groups and uh, associations there are various groups and associations operating in the fields of education business trade art religion science and the associations keep the government in touch with the trend of public opinion so that it may shape its policies accordingly what is the role of opposition this is also very very important you know what happens when you have a competitor opposition plays a role of competitor you know how if i say for example i am the monitor of the class okay so i have got so many responsibilities i have some authorities also what happened with the rest of the students these are the rest of the students right so what happened teacher would always talk to the monitor but these children they would prove themselves better than this monitor so that the teacher would approach them the teacher would would approach them so what does it mean the same manner happens with the opposition party they keeps an eye on the existing rulers they play an important role because they question the government they question the government on whose behalf on our behalf because ultimately they are also they are also our representatives so role of opposition party is also very very important and you know their role is to question the government of the day and hold them accountable to the public national party leader dr don brash says the opposition represents an alternative government and is responsible for challenging the policies obviously uh, 
when the policies are being made who is going to challenge them whether it is a right or the wrong one who is going to question the government that what is right and what is wrong because on our behalf also we are not supposed to go over there so directly we cannot go so who is going to uh, ask the questions on uh, like um, our side the opposition is going to ask the question on our side and producing different policies where appropriate then enlightened public opinion even this is also very important to know what is the opinion of the public what a common citizen thinks as you must all be knowing that uh, government of india has started many social media sites where we could have direct link with the government of india like uh, uh, honorable prime minister mr narendra modi has started man ki baat as well like directly he is in link with the people and there uh, always he keeps one topic to discuss about and people do write blogs they go give all the details uh, even on the twitters and so public uh, opinion is also growing responsiveness to uh, mass ideas by the rapidly evolving human mentality this potent force has been much abused and mass psychology and mob determination have been exploited down the ages and for the unthinking and the emotional are easily swayed in any direction previously this has been turned to advantage by those who do not have uh, the best interest of humanity at heart and it has been used for selfish and evil ends for more often than for good the 21st century is an era of knowledge if poverty is to be abolished in this country it can be abolished only through knowledge and this is what um, honorable prime minister narendra modi thinks and he always welcome the public opinion as well so public opinion enlightens the government to improve the development of the country okay uh the following are some safeguards of liberty we have already discussed a lot let's wind up in this uh, summarized way urge for liberty and vigilance that means the people in a state must have the urge for liberty and must be very vigilant to detain it then democratic form of government as i have already told you that this is uh, a government where everybody has a share in the administration only democrats that means government can provide congenial uh, atmosphere for the development human personality it is conducive for the full enjoyment of liberty and how the separation of powers is done i have told you the decentralization that means from uh, upper to lower level power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely power as a inner trend of misuse and power should act as a check to power obviously when somebody has power this is not necessary that that person would use that power in a positive way he or she might get it for granted and he can go to the wrong direction too so uh, the three branches of government executive legislature judiciary are to be separated all the dr garner absolute separation is neither possible nor desirable the list of fundamental rights as i have uh, already cleared this thing that an unbendious list of fundamental rights in the constitution is already given and the people must be conversant with their rights and the government must be aware of the limitation of powers and these rights are justiciable and any act that contravenes the provision of the constitution can be declared ultra vires independent judiciary and all organs of the government must enjoy the independent uh, judiciary uh, it is for the protection and preservation and individual liberty also the judiciary must be independent on executive and legislative control and rule of law the concept of rule of law means all persons are equal before law and law makes no distinction between the rich and the poor and the high and low public opinion and free press that means healthy public opinion and free press can do lot to protect liberty because free press can mobilize public opinion and will make people conscious and vigilant responsible government a government formed by the representatives of the people is bound to be responsible any mistake on the part of the government will sound its death knell and the opposition party will capitalize on it a bi party system with a strong opposition will ensure necessarily safeguard for liberty now let's move we have uh, read about the safeguards of the limited uh, liberty but there are few limitations on individual liberty also let's see how liberty is not licensed to do anything this is quite obvious if you are free that doesn't mean that you will do anything wrong right this is not allowed and this would end up in anarchy the very extreme of liberty restrictions that means boundations are necessary 
as i have already given you one example for example your parents says okay you can go for a picnic you can go for an outing and you can uh, enjoy your uh, friend circle but it do- doesn't mean that you are going to uh, just uh, oppose your parents for anything or you are uh, going to uh, destroy all those guidelines which they have made or the moral values which they have given you at home so that means freedom is required but with some foundations as well so in the interest of general welfare they are imposed in the form of laws law is the condition of liberty while laws are restrictions to liberty also and it is imperative that so imposed laws are not unjust excessive and stringent restrictions hamper intellectual and moral growth of the individual if i say we people have a right to work right we people have right to work or education as well now this is up to us that wh- how we are using this right if i have got the right to education this is up to me whether i want to study or not whether i would go further for the studies or not and then i would study so who says that you have to earn money by becoming a thief right who says you have to be a robber who says you have to be a terrorist that means if the right to work is given that means you have to do the hard work it should be your hard earned bread butter or the economic conditions should be um, uh, improved through the better uh, uh, form of professions but not the negative one so you one should not be negative and above all liberty has two aspects also negative and positive aspect so why do we need constraints or limitation on liberty how do laws promote freedom in fact liberty can never mean license that means freedom to behave in a wrong or irresponsible way if you have got some fundamental rights it doesn't mean that you are going to do uh, anything of your own desire or your own wish because you know the uh, the people those who enjoy the freedom it doesn't matter if they are at a very good post even then they are using all those powers in the wrong direction and they are doing it they are taking it uh, for granted no it is not like that for that to keep an eye laws uh, are always there so absence of restraints could be negative liberty but it doesn't mean that you cannot as we have already read uh, negative uh, liberty says i am not a slave but th- this doesn't mean that you are going to against laws so for instance limitation on freedom of thought and expression is required to that no one could become a nuisance for others that means you have to set an example in the moral values or or uh, in the right uh, direction but it doesn't means and citizens have a right to criticize the government because we can go uh, in the opposition as well if we don't like the policies and the strategies of the government we can intimate them because government is fully accountable to the people because they are being chosen by us only and uh, limitation on freedom uh, does arise from two uh, sources that is legal and social as i have said legal way legal is clearly an important limitation on the freedom because freedom cannot go against the laws and uh, and uh, in eyes of law everyone is equal if a person is a rich or poor it hardly matters if both of them have done something wrong so it means that they all are equally punished in case both are found guilty in any of the reasons for the same thing and for example the land act in south africa had reserved nearly 87% of the land for the whites the group areas uh, act provided for separate living areas for the whites and blacks and the mixed races such evil laws were repelled by the south african government in february 1991 and this is something very wrong why you are dividing a country on the basis of race if all are uh, just enjoying or all are uh, living in one geographical boundary they are part of one country then why to have different laws or different strategies for two different communities why not they are counted as uh, the citizen of the country why to bifurcate all these things so if i talk about india also india is living uh, unity in diversity we all are coming from diverse uh, uh, languages religions and social backgrounds even then we all are living as indians not as hindus or muslims or christians or buddhist or jainism or no, nothing nothing like that the first religion or first identity is indian 
these are preserve uh, group attitudes and values and more values that influence behaviors of individuals within the groups these are social constraints and they create an atmosphere encouraging socially acceptable moment activities discouraging ones that are not socially acceptable social constraints are social expectations or norms which create feelings or obligations to remain in the activity for example playing to please parents would be social constraint and feelings of obligation should lower self determination so commitment should be highest when social constraints are low let's revise the chapter the term liberty is taken from liber which is a word from it is latin language and identify the focus of modern liberalism it is individual and negative liberty means uh, without restraints and liber means free the concepts of liberty uh, liberty is an essential for the development of the personality of the individual this is your first point and montesag remarked that no other word left so indelible an impression on the mind of the individual as the word liberty the term liberty is derived from the latin word liber which means free and in other words liberty means freedom to do whatever a man likes to and liberty is understood in two different ways negative aspect of liberty and positive aspect of liberty negative aspect of liberty is uh, like with absolute freedom with no constraints no boundations and absence of all restraints meaning of negative liberty and according to js mill liberty means absence of all restraints and he divided man's spheres of an activity and self regarding and other regarding and state interference is justified only in other regarding activities in cases action amounts to an intervention in the domain and uh, the freedom of his fellow beings and herbert spencer bentham and adam smith also supported negative aspect of liberty and according to professor barker liberty is immunity from interference but positive aspects of liberty say something else that is a real liberty has a positive connotation it does not mean the absence of restrictions that means it has a liberty but with some limitations and the opportunities and the citizens enjoy these opportunities for self realization and the state maintains those rights and opportunities which help the citizens to develop all that best in them and the true test of liberty in the extent to which the law of the land helps the citizen to develop all that is good in him and the positive aspect of liberty includes the right of man to do or enjoy something that is worth enjoying and lasky says liberty is the eager maintenance of that atmosphere in which men have the opportunity to be their best selves and brief it means enjoyment of certain important rights such as the freedom of life freedom of thought and freedom of worship etc and from liberty we understand the following things liberty does not mean absence of all restrictions absence of unjust and tyrannical uh, restrictions it means legal moral and reasonable restrictions on the functions of man and liberty is an essential condition for the development of individual personality liberty means the rights to the individual to do things which are not harmful to others and also are entitled to liberty uh, equally kinds of liberty now let's see what are the kinds of liberty liberty i think uh, a major concept is clear to you all but let's know uh, what are the different types and the natural liberty is as generally understood the natural liberty means complete freedom for a man to do what he pleases and natural liberty existed in the state of nature which existed before the birth of the society contractualist uh, like hobbes lock and rousseau speak in term of uh, state of nature in which there were no restraints and in a social contract theory rousseau state that man enjoyed true liberty in the state of nature but it, it must be remembered that the state of nature was pre social and pre political and it is difficult to visualize liberty that existed in the pre social periods of history it must have been governed by the law of jungle and liberty must have implied and one um, advice to you all like i have given all these in one go so what you could do is you could divide natural liberty in a part b part c part d part so that it will be more easier for you to learn it then the moral liberty moral liberty is of great importance in the life of an individual that means it is important for an individual and moral liberty means freedom to do things according to the dictates of one's conscience that means you are your own dictator right that means desires individual desires own choice 
and green and and banquet have supported the idea of moral liberty moral liberty is not at all concerned with the state it is concerned with the individual's own self and civil liberty it is the liberty which a man enjoys in a state or civil society and it consists of the rights and privileges which the state creates and protects for its subjects and uh, the right uh, of each to do as he chooses within the limits set down by law and it may involve protection from interference at the hands of the government civil liberty primarily consists of freedom of conscience and belief freedom of opinion and freedom of action freedom of movement and equality in the eye of the law civil liberty is of immense value to the individual and association in a state then economic liberty means security of one's bread and reasonable opportunities where he he or she could get the opportunities to earn the money and it is basically the employment and if a person uh, is um, unemployment and uh, insufficient so it must be safeguarded against the wants tomorrow so economic liberty consists in the individual's right to work and to minimum wage and right to leisure by the regulation of hours of works in the fields factories mines etc wherever he or she gets the job and above all because uh, this is the right to form unions and the right to uh, provision against old age sickness unemployment accidents also maternity benefits and democracy can be real only if results and economic as well as liberty and political liberty is considered synonyms with the democracy where the people have the right to vote they can uh, participate in the government administration and the right to hold political office and the right to make a constructive criticism of the government policy and political liberty thus can exist in democracies only and national liberty it is applied by the nation as well as individuals a nation or people is said to be free when it is a it has a government of its own choice and it is not subjected to any foreign control and national liberty exists where the state is a national state that is where the community is independent sovereign and the individual can have little liberty civil political or economic unless there is national liberty and india attained national liberty 1947 in the recent past bangladesh attained national liberty with the help of indian forces a uh, forces and national liberty is more important than all other types of liberty international liberty is also there the idol of international covers the world as a whole and it implies renunciation of war limitation on the production of armaments and um, uh, abandonment of the use of force and peaceful settlement of disputes it also desires adequate curbs of the str uh, strength of the military force so that it may not crush the liberties of the local people or for the people of any other country and also desires adequate curbs on the strength of military force so that it may not crush the liberties of the local people of the people of any other country that's all for the chapter this was the last topic international liberty and hope this video will help you a lot please use this video as a support material along with your book see you in the next chapter thank you have a good time